Hello friends, I'm Chromatic Sauce and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I figured I'd give it a shot and try to draw a tiger. Now the last time I drew a tiger was probably about a decade ago. So I was really wanting to do something that was cool and I know tigers look pretty cool. Um, this drawing is in a watercolor so I guess technically it's a painting but I do draw on top of it so there's that. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to draw with watercolor. So you see me here. I'm wetting the paper first. I'm wetting the entire tiger, excluding the nose and the eyes. That way I can add the orange and brown tones of the tiger's fur and they won't leak into the eye or nose area because those areas are not going to be orange. So off camera, I mixed together uh, some orange and a little bit of brown to create a little bit of a darker, more earthy kind of orange color since, you know, tigers aren't usually bright orange. I did want to keep a bit of vibrancy in the orange just to make it stand out more. Uh, I noticed with watercolor, a lot of times it, it looks really vibrant and saturated right when you put it on, but after it dries, it kind of dulls out a little bit. So that's something I wanted to keep in mind as I was building up the color. So you see in the middle, I kept it way more orange, but then towards the sides, I left it lighter orange because a lot of the fur in that area was basically white or just like a little bit of a dirty color. So I just filled in the initial and the lighter tones with this orange first. Uh, I wanted to give a nice base layer when my paper was still as wet as possible. That way I could spread out and thin out the watercolor as nicely as it could. After that dried a little bit, it wasn't fully dry, but I did give it a chance so it wasn't sopping wet so that when I put more watercolor down, it didn't leak everywhere. I added a little bit more depth around the eyes and around the really shadowy areas on the fur. because. I was going to go over it with colored pencil, but I wanted to get most of the depth and the coloring for the orange, especially. I wanted to get that done with the watercolor. I wanted that watercolory look through it. Now, I'm not sure how much I actually succeeded trying out this watercolory type of style. You can let me know down in the comments below. Um, maybe wait for the end or skip or fast forward to the end if this is boring for you. <laughs> But either way, by this point, I was trying to get the majority of my orange down, the majority of my depth down, at least with the orange. I went in with a little bit more of straight up brown, like not mixed with orange for some of the really darker areas, like right under the chin, and then a little bit around the eyes and in the middle of the face again to add a little bit more depth. That way you can see the edges of the really light orange and then you can see the edges of the darker orange and then the really dark brown helps deepen it up without using black or anything. Once I was done with the orange parts of the tiger, I wanted to think of a background color that would contrast the orange pretty well and I decided on green. Now as I said before, I'm still trying to get a grasp on the watercolor thing. I definitely think I made this green way too dark and saturated. I think I said before, watercolor is supposed to be a see-through medium. It's not acrylic paint. You're supposed to see the watery marks from it. You're supposed to see the paper through it. And it gives it a nice vibrancy and a nice texture. So while I like the texture of the background, I do think I could have used a lot less paint and done a really thin wash and I think the painting overall would have been way more successful just because I think the background ended up being extremely bold in this case. But once I was done the background, I was letting it dry so I wanted to move on to the eyes and the nose of the tiger. I just mixed up a little bit of green with a little bit of brown for the eyes just to give a little bit of shading and a base color. I knew I was going to do most of the detail with the eyes with a colored pencil and gouache on top, so I wasn't too concerned about leaving any white highlights out. I probably should have been more concerned with that because I think it would have helped the overall painting be a lot more vibrant and the eyes be more vibrant because it's hard to layer on top, especially gouache isn't really an opaque 
material. It's a little bit more opaque than watercolor, but it's not like white out. And then the nose, I just mixed a little bit of reddish pink and then a little bit of brown just to give the shape of the nose. Once I was done with those details, I figured I could go in to add a little bit more depth with black. Now, um, I feel like the tiger definitely needed black, but I asked my grandma who paints in watercolor and she said, you're not even supposed to use black with watercolor. She said that her teacher, who was like a famous watercolorist, my grandma said that she said, don't ever use the black, basically, because watercolor is supposed to be a light color. And it's supposed to let the light show through. I mean, like the paper show through. It's the paper that you're sort of accenting with the watercolor. I don't know if I'm really describing that well. But I'm not sure, since this is a tiger and it has black stripes, I'm not sure if this would be an exception either way. I'm not sure how else to paint a tiger without using black. Um, and maybe that's just that watercolorist style. Maybe a lot of watercolors do use black, but I think um, when I painted this tiger, I painted a few other drawings or paintings. But I think after showing you those ones, I'm going to try a few watercolors where I try not to use the black at all. I'm a little mad about Sketchbox for sending me that black watercolor stick because I feel like it's the black that ruined a lot of the things for me. I mean, not that they were completely amazing and perfect without the black, but like that daffodil, that first daffodil, I thought it was kind of pretty before, like the composition wasn't great, but I thought the daffodil was pretty before I added the black and then I was like, shoot. And the only reason that happened was because I was trying to add every single item that they gave us in the box. So it kind of sucked there. And then the other thing that the black is really what got me that I think really made me mess up was the horse. I took it, and it's my fault for sure, but I took it way too dark, way too fast. And if I didn't have that black watercolor to like lean on as like a comfort for myself for using the darkest color, maybe that horse actually probably would have turned out worse. <laughs> but maybe the horse could have ended up looking lighter. Like maybe I could have figured it out without putting straight up black down on the paper first. Either way, so here I am using black to deepen things up. I deepened up around the face and around the jaw. I made a little bit of shading around like the paws and stuff. And then I didn't have any lines planned out and I didn't know how long it would take so I didn't film but I did most of the stripes around the face and a little bit more details around the face with the black uh, and it was pretty easy. Now I didn't use the outline for this I was just eyeballing it so the stripes are definitely not perfect but I don't think tiger stripes are really that even anyway. It kind of bothers me but I think it's alright. <laughs> So basically I'm just looking at the reference photo that I had and just adding some watercolor down. I'm using just black here I think, not brown at all. And I'm just outlining every shape of the stripe that there was. There wasn't much on the paws or on the back of the tiger at all, but I did finish off the forehead here for you just so you could see how I was doing it. I didn't even go back in with pencil after after I put on any watercolor I just winged it and that's probably it's probably better to outline everything but I was feeling overwhelmed with the amount of stripes and I was like how am I gonna tell if they look good with no shading in between so I just I just went straight in with the black you know balls to the walls if it turns out bad I wasn't painting this for anyone <laughs> if I was I probably would have worked harder on the sketch because I don't know if you can tell because this camera is pointing at a little bit of an angle for the piece but my proportions are way off the nose is a little bit too high now it's not that noticeable but if you were to see my reference picture which I'm not gonna show you <laughs> you could tell that the nose is a little bit too high up and I feel like that whole situation kind of messes things up with the balance of the drawing and the balance of how the stripes look on the face because the jaw is in the right spot, 
but the nose is just too far away from the jaw so it's not even like I changed the angle it's just everything else I think is successful and the same shape and size as the real tiger but the nose is just like a centimeter or two higher than it should have been which is what makes pencil sketches difficult when you don't add a lot of detail you can't really see how things are off and unfortunately with watercolor and colored pencils there's really no way to undo undo that so I just went with it afterwards it was way too late by the time I realized it because I was so up close into it anyway I'm just blabbering basically I started in with my colored pencil after that after I finished all the stripes I used black over top of all the black stripes to create lines on top of everything. I pretty much created lines over all the black. I shaded the ears fully with white and a lighter orange and a darker orange. And I didn't shade all the fur fully but I did add a little bit of touches just so the texture was a little bit more even throughout. And beyond that I just used the colored pencils to sort of crisp everything up, cut out shapes. I let the white hairs go over the black section with the pencil and then I used some darker oranges and blacks to cut out the whiter, lighter hairs around the jawline and the chin. And I really think doing that made the drawing a lot more successful. Um, now I kind of wish I tried a little bit harder to do all the detail with watercolor, but I think I'll forgive myself because I'm still learning and I don't have all the technical abilities available to me when doing watercolor so I just feel comfortable with the colored pencil and I just wanted to see how it would look on top of the watercolor but I kind of like the watercolor with a micron felt tip pen more I like adding the details with that I think it really holds true to the look of the way watercolor looks, how you can see the patterns of the pooling of the ink and pigments and stuff. I really like that look and I feel like while the colored pencil doesn't look terrible on top of it, I think it kind of takes away from that look a little bit to have all those hair strokes with the colored pencil, have that waxy texture on top that covers the edges of your watercolor marks because that's the charm of watercolor to be able to see the marks left behind uh, and putting paint and color pencil on top kind of erase that so you see me here I'm just cleaning up the eyes I'm adding dark for the pupils pretty much all the black I went over with the black colored pencil because I wanted it to be really rich and really black then I used the white colored pencil to go over top of sections in the black to shade and I used the white color pencil to do the highlights in the eyes, which didn't really brighten it up too much. So I do end up going over it with gouache, but even still, it's not that bright. It definitely would have been a lot better if I left out a white highlight, and that would have been so simple too, huh? But you live and you learn. This isn't a perfect drawing, but I still think it was good enough and worth posting, so that's why we're here. Basically, I add a little bit more detail around the edges of the eyes uh, since the original color was a flat, pretty much a solid color. I added a little bit of shading around the edges. I used black to create a little bit more texture in the iris. And then I used white right around the edge of the iris to really make it pop. And I think that worked really well and I think the eyes popped a lot. Uh, off screen, I did shade a little bit with black on that background that way the fur where I cut into the edges of the fur with black it would kind of blend into something other than just black lines going straight into green where there wasn't even supposed to be black fur so I kind of did that for shadow and then I think my least favorite part but I'm still learning I'm I'm going through a struggle phase right now where I'm learning how to do things so things aren't gonna look as pretty as I want them to be but at this point, I'm going in with gouache. I kind of wished I used a thinner brush, but I didn't have a thinner brush to use. So I just used this slightly too thick brush to do the whiskers with the gouache. 
and I wasn't really sure. I don't know why I always forget about creating shading underneath whiskers, but I feel like the whiskers kind of take away a little bit from the darkness around the mouth. And I also made two lines basically going straight across like through the middle of the nose area which is a little bit silly because it goes off the page one side and then off the page with the other side and it looks like one whisker going across the whole thing. But that's just my, my eyes seeing that. I did try to build up the opacity with the gouache. Um, putting gouache over top of color pencil, I don't know if that's recommended technically, but the color pencil did definitely blend into the gouache. Like my, my paintbrush was getting a little bit gray. And I wish I went in underneath the whiskers to create shadows under each every whisker. Just a little line, like not too crazy. And I think that would have sharpened up the image and created a little bit more clarity in that area. But you know, you live and you learn. I added more white to the eyes and I added a little bit more hair strokes to the ears so that they had a little bit more white in there to stand out better. And overall, I feel like this was a really fun experiment and I really love how it turned out even though my drawing proportions were a little bit off. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see me draw next. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Chromatic Sauce. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!